All right, abuse and neglect. So our different forms of abuse, we have sexual, emotional, domestic, there's physical neglect, um, financial abuse, exploitation, uh, risk factors for abuse, stress, lack of a support system, um, isolation. If somebody was a victim of abuse, they may become an abuser in the future. If there's drug or alcohol abuse in the home, lower socioeconomic status can be a risk factor for abuse. Uh, and, and going back to stress, right now is a very stressful time um, with the pandemic and with you know financial uncertainty. Um, so unfortunately, things have uh, statistics have shown that there has been a spike in, in domestic abuse cases and um, that contributes directly to these risk factors. There's, there's isolation, we're in our homes, there's stress. Um, and then somebody may be living with an abuser. It's a very hard time for these, for these people. So just keep that in mind. Um, how do we identify abuse and neglect? Well, if it's neglect, you might have somebody that has poor hygiene, they haven't had health care. they have, um, if they're bedridden, they might have bed sores. If it's sexual abuse, we might see trauma specifically to the genitalia. Um, somebody might have a history of multiple miscarriages or um, unwanted pregnancies, a domestic abuse or any kind of physical abuse. You're going to see bruises in different stages of healing. You might have a um, h &P with multiple ER visits, multiple broken bones, unexplained falls. Um, cigarette burns are pretty common for abuse. Things like that. Those are some signs and symptoms of, of abuse and neglect. So what do we do when we've identified that we have a patient that's being abused? What do we do next? Well, we want to talk to them, right? We want to talk to them privately. This can be hard because in a lot of cases, the abuser might be the person with them might be at the bedside. Why is that? They like to control the narrative. Um, abusers don't want to lose that control. So they're not going to want the patient to answer questions on their own. We need to work very hard to get the patient alone, to get them in a private environment so that we can have a therapeutic conversation with them where they feel comfortable opening up to us about their situation at home. Make sure you get on their level. Don't stand over them. That's a power dynamic that they're used to that can make them very uncomfortable. Use eye contact, but not too much eye contact. It's not a staring contest. Use um, open, open body language. Don't cross your arms. Uh, with children especially, try to minimize yourself. So get even lower than their level. Um, that might make them feel more safe. Allow time for silence. Um, use open-ended questions free of judgment. It's very important. And if somebody opens up about their abuse, uh, it's important to remember that we can only report it for an adult if they give us consent to report it. So regardless, this is going to go into their chart. We're going to let the healthcare team know, let their care team know um, what's going on. But we do not have the power to report it to law enforcement unless that adult patient gives us consent or their injury was created by a lethal weapon or strangulation. So please keep that in mind. It's very important. Um, now, if it's a child, an elder, or somebody mentally handicapped, we are mandated to report even if it's suspected. So DCS and APS will report it too. Case management can assist us here. Um, and, and we're going to have help in these conversations. Case management can help counsel patients on resources available to get them out of these abusive situations. And um, we won't be doing this alone. And just remember, the first step is talking to somebody, is sitting down and actively listening. And if you have an adult patient that doesn't want to report it this time around, you might see them again, and they may be more open to it later. But you're planting the seed, letting them know that if they need help, we can give them help. We can get them out of that abusive situation. Okay, our last topic is human trafficking. So who is vulnerable for human trafficking? Well, it's the physical, sexual, and economic exploitation of someone. So a lot of people are vulnerable. Um, unfortunately, this is a, um, an epidemic in, in our nation, especially. Uh, it's become much more common. Um, and it can be any age. It can be either sex. Uh, the vulnerable populations tend to be lower socioeconomic. The LGBTQ community is at risk. Someone that is homeless or has unstable housing, somebody with chronic mental illness, substance abuse, a history of trauma, um, 
Signs and symptoms mirror that of abuse. So you'll see bruises and fractures. Uh, you might see signs of physical restraint. So um, facial petechiae, ligature marks around the wrists or ankles. Um, again, these people are not getting um, health care. So a lot of them will have health problems, hearing loss, dental problems, malnutrition, dehydration. Um, they might have chronic pain, pain specific to genitalia. They might be fearful, submissive, depressed, crying. They might have PTSD. They might be self-harming. Um, lots of signs and symptoms here for somebody that might be a human trafficking um, victim. An important one to note is substance abuse. So a lot of these people that end up in human trafficking rings are looking for a better job, a better life, love. And once a trafficker gets their hands on them, they're very quick to get them hooked to a substance. That's a twofold um, there's twofold reasoning there. The first is that physically they're much able, easier to control if they're hooked on a substance, right? The second part being that they become dependent on that trafficker to score that hit when they become addicted to the abuse. So it's a brutally efficient way to keep somebody caged without actually putting them in a cage. Um, you'll see a lot of substance abuse with your human trafficking victims. We are mandated to report human trafficking. If you suspect human trafficking, we have got to report it. Um, it's very important. Out in the community as well, if you are somewhere and you think that you have seen a human trafficking victim or a situation that, that indicates human trafficking, please report it. It is our responsibility as humans to help save people. Because the worst thing that can happen is that you're a little bit embarrassed and the best thing you, that can happen is you can save someone's life. So just keep that in mind. And obviously when you report it in the hospital, you're gonna have help, you're gonna let your supervisor know. Um, Case management will help you here as well. Um, and when you're having that conversation with the patient, if they don't speak English, use the language line, um, use all the resources you can to help that person uh, because human trafficking is, is, um, is just a terrible, a terrible situation to end up in. And, and unfortunately, we have a lot of vulnerable populations that do. All right, so out of the darkness, <laughs> Um, your sadness lecture for the day. If you have any email questions, any questions, please email them to sthe education at ascension.org. Thank you.